the little red-handled one. Oh, there it is, Sarah. It's right down here. Fantastic. Well, the, when we were in prayer this morning, <laughs> um, I thought... That's Jody Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. The, um, when we were in prayer this morning, I was just really impressed that, um, that we were supposed to do like a congregational response. So, um, so everybody knows the, the, the old saying, God is good. Right, exactly. So, so I say, God is good, and you guys go, all the time. And then I say, all the time. Oh, man, you guys are awesome, okay? But let's do it with, um, like we meet it, okay? So, um, so let's, uh, uh, can we have everybody all rise? Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Lord is in the house. Amen. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this morning... God is good. All the time. And all the time. All the time. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Let's give him praise this morning. Everything to me, praise to the one who gives us life, 
Praise to the one who sets Are you free this free. morning? Praise to the one who's only God. Jesus to everything to me. Praise to the one who gives us life. Praise to the one who sets us free. Praise to the one and only God. Jesus, we sing it out. Praise to you, God. We sing it out. Jesus, we're grateful. And we celebrate you. Praise to you, God. We sing it out. Jesus, we're grateful. And we celebrate you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we praise your name. We give you glory, Lord God. Yeah. Awaken, O Spirit. Let praise awaken inside every heart. For He is awesome. Our God is awesome. We are grateful and able to do anything. So I trust you, never doubt you, because you own it all. Every day in my life. ground is shaking as we're singing loud for he is awesome our God is awesome he is faithful you are faithful and you're able to do anything yes Lord so I trust you never doubt you Praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. Let praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. Let praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. Let praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. You know, I just, uh, I just really have the, the strong impression that in the spirit that um, that's our heart cry. That's the spirit rising up within us to speak that out, that, the, that this generation would be a generation of praise. So, you know what? The spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord gives us life. Let his spirit testify this morning to that call. All right, that we would call forth from the nations, that we would call forth from Invercargo, let alone New Zealand, but from the nations as well, that this generation would not be quiet before the Lord, that, that praise would rise up and would give honor to, the, to our God, that this would be the generation that becomes the generation of praise throughout the world. It would not be just in the churches, it would be in the streets, it would be in the slums, it would be in the poorest places of humanity. That, that as we go forth, as we speak forth praise, the goodness of our God, that his kingdom would come and his will would be done so that he would receive the just rewards of his suffering on the cross for us. So let your, let your spirit testify this morning. If you, you, need to, you need to kind of shake off the stuff, but let your spirit testify. Let praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. 
Let praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. Let praise awaken in this generation. Yes, Lord. Let praise awaken all around the world. Let praise awaken in this generation. Let praise awaken all around the world. Every day of my life, I'll praise you. Every moment, I'll bless your name. Yeah. You have given me love unfailing. Every day of my life I'll praise you. Every moment I'll bless your name. You have given me love unfailing. Hey, yes, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, Lord. Yes, let praise rise up in this generation, Lord. Let praise rise up. We bless your name. We give you honor and glory, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we bless you. Oh, we praise you. Lord, we give you honor this morning because the world, your creation testifies about you, Lord. Let your, let your creation bear witness today. Mm. Let your creation bear witness today to the goodness of our God. To the goodness of our God. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yes, Lord. to hear your still small voice again holy righteous faithful till the end savior healer redeemer and friend i will worship you for who you are i will worship Jesus, my soul's pure, my soul's 
You know what? There's a, there is a, a stream of honey from the throne of God, and it's for healing this morning. It's a stream of honey. So if you need to taste and see that the Lord is good, um, uh, just think about that. What does that stream look like this morning for you? What is that stream of honey coming from the Lord, coming from the throne of God, ready for your healing, that He would know, that you would know and, and be able to taste it, not only that, but see that the Lord is good, bringing healing to your life. So, Lord, we come to you, hungry for your presence now. We exalt you, Lord, on our lips and on our tongues. Bring your healing to us now. your healing with your glorious presence oh come oh come oh come oh Jesus come minister Minister to your people, minister to your You know, when, uh, when the, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to men, um, it's kind of like when we give gifts to other people. You'd like to see the, the person that receives the gift enjoy it, don't you? So that's what this song is about, okay? We've just, uh, you know, the Lord has given us something just now, and, and now He wants to walk with us and see how we enjoy it. And he's so, he's so relational. He's just like, he's so much like us in that way. So, so he knows the, the desire of our hearts. Author of the world, walk with me. Ruler of the earth, walk with me.
calmer of the storm. Walk with me. Healer of my heart, walk with me. Presence. Your presence, Lord, there is peace, there is rest. In your presence, Lord, there is life that never ends. Either of Walk with me Healer of the earth Walk with me Light for every step Light for every step Walk with me Give her of each breath. Give her of each breath. Walk with me. Oh, I need you. Thank you that you walk with us. Thank you that you're here with us. I just feel, let's pick up that chorus one more time. But as we do, I just want to encourage you. Imagine what that feels like. God is joy. His joy is our strength, the Bible tells us. As we lift our hands, as we praise Him, open your heart up. Open your spirits up to the joy that He brings, the overflowing joy that only God can bring into your life. And it doesn't depend on your circumstances or your situation. It's there for you. It's available for you to take hold of right now. Let's pick up that chorus and let's lift our hands and let's 
praise God joyfully with the joy that only He can bring. In your presence, Lord, there is peace, there is rest. In your presence, Lord, there is life that never ends. In your presence, Lord, there is joy, there is joy. Yes, it's joy. In your presence, Lord, there is life that never ends. In your presence, Lord, there is joy. In your presence, Lord, there is joy. There is joy. In your presence, Lord, there is life that never ends. How I need, how I love. verse 3 says declare his glory among the nations his marvelous deeds among the peoples for great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised he is to be feared above all the gods and today Lord we declare your glory in this nation and in the nations of the world we declare that you are the one true living God we lift up your name and we proclaim your goodness We give thanks, Lord, that you are for us, that you are not against us, that you are here with us, Lord, and that your heart is towards us. We love you, Lord, and we give thanks in Jesus' name for your amazing love for us. Hallelujah. And all God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Chuck, I just feel this morning, I feel God saying to you, uh, you're like, I get a picture of a woodpecker. And I feel like God's saying, you're just hitting it. You're just hitting it prophetically. You're just continually hitting it. And I feel like God's saying you're in a season where prophetically you'll continue to hit it in your work life, in your home life, wherever you are. It's like God's just uh, released a real prophetic mantle on your life. And I just see you hitting things in the spirit without even... Uh, without even noticing that's happening sometimes in your workplace and and those around you. So I just encourage you. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Let's just say hi to someone around us. Give them a kiss or a cuddle. If they look like they don't want it, please don't. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Wow, it's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, just love being here. It's always so good. And you have picked a great day to join us because every day in the house of the Lord is great. Amen. We've got some good stuff going on. Let's start with some celebration. Who's had a birthday around here? Anybody? Anybody had a birthday this week? Anniversary? Reason to celebrate? Oh, look, my lovely assistant here is standing here eagerly waiting to throw chocolate at you. Anyone? Visitors, all the way from Sydney, Grant Baker, welcome. Woo! Any other visitors? Oh, welcome. Where are you guys from? Alcolita. Woo! Big River Town. Welcome. <laughs> Yay, we love visitors. Birthday? Visiting. 
welcome. It's always good to have visitors. Amen. No, no more visitors. No more birthdays. Anyone want chocolate? Yeah. Jessica's mum's birthday. That's pretty good. <laughs> Amen. We've got some exciting stuff happening in the church this week. Tonight we have a baptism service. So if you are not being baptised and you haven't been baptised and you want to be baptised, it is not too late. Come and see Garth after the service um, and uh, he'll hook you up. We've got a pool bubbling in the corner here that will be cosy and warm. So I'm sure you want to get in there tonight, 6 o'clock, and it's going to be life-changing. So I encourage you, if you haven't been baptised, have a think about it, have a pray about it. It will change your world, seriously. Um, next weekend we've got Dennis McCaskill, all the way from Hamilton. Yep, he's a, a well-known evangelist, author, and revivalist, and he's going to be with us at 10 o'clock and 6 o'clock services, so you want to come check that out, bring your friends. It'll be a great night. Next Saturday is our first Women's Community Cafe, so we've got guest speaker from the Women's Refuge. Um, there's a wee flyer that'll be handed out when you leave with items you can donate if you want to come along and partner uh, with the Women's Refuge and hear what they're doing in our community. Uh, remember, I've mentioned in the last few weeks, um, we are also... also um, donating clean new underwear so uh, if you want to come along uh, there's no charge for coffee or cake but remember ladies bring your knickers so there you have it that'll be great seven o'clock next saturday um oh what's happening now in is happening but just before you come in i just i'd like to pray for you so so i um think as ends coming up here already i just want to um everyone to extend their hands to Ian, because Ian, I just feel like God's saying this morning uh, that you're carrying something, um, and I just really feel to pray for you, and, and I feel like God's saying that, Ian, I um, heard you talk about generals of the faith, generals, uh, God's generals, and I feel like God's saying uh, you need to know that your name is on that list, your name is on that list, and I feel that God's saying that uh, you are not just a revivalist, but you are a, an apostle, not just to this nation, but to many nations. And I feel like God is saying that there's a release that's happening right now. And uh, I believe God's saying, Father, I give thanks for that release. Lord, I give thanks for what you're doing in Ian. I just honour him as our leader, as our pastor, as an apostle to this nation and to the nations. I give thanks for the legacy that he is building among the nations and that his heart is for your people. Father, we just release a fresh your anointing, Lord. We release a fresh that fire that's within him, Lord, that as he speaks your word today, Lord, that it is contagious. I just see like a rumbling fire that's just uh, filling this place, like a, a, an explosion happening today in hearts and lives. And I give thanks for this amazing man in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just stand and honor Pastor in as he speaks. Please sit down. That's um, very good, Carol, and highly embarrassing as well. And that's, uh, hey, it is so good to have Grant Baker um, uh, here. You, some of you don't know Grant and Sarah, uh, but uh, when they left us, they were just Grant and Sarah, but now they have three children. Is that correct? And uh, they live in Sydney. Uh, uh, Grant works in the production team at Hillsong. That's his job. And Sarah's a GP, and uh, she's involved in all of those things. But these guys, I just wanted to honour them because he's here for his grandmother's, granddad's 100th birthday. Is that correct? Yeah, so that's pretty good. So that's uh, my mother, who's just a couple of rows behind you, is 92 uh, in uh, a couple of weeks' time. I'm telling you what, you know, 100. Imagine what she's going to look like at 100. That's going to be awesome. And uh, so there we go. So fantastic. But I, I just want to, I want to honor Grant because um, many of you don't know the story, but uh, we, you know, we went through a real uh, time of, of real stress in our music about 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago now and, and just a whole bunch of stuff we had to change and that. And uh, we were praying, God, would you just, um, would you just, uh, Lord, just, we need, we need your help. You know, Lord, you said you'd build the church. Please give us a hand. It's a good thing to pray. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, and uh, Grant and Sarah turned up. Sarah was doing a, 
she's a doctor and she was doing a, a houseman years to a couple of years at the hospital and all of those kind of things and Grant was involved in sound and audio and uh, and both of them could sing and, and all that kind of stuff and so we hired them on the spot it was just like you know on a volunteer basis we have no money but you know could, and I think it was uh, only about two Sundays that we're here and Grant was up leading worship and and uh, you know they just invested so much into our music at that time and I honor you because you came uh, really by the direction of God and and, uh, and it was fantastic. I think you'd only just got married, uh, something like that. But uh, Grant Baker, you are a general in the faith and I really honor you and just want to thank you. So let's put our hands together and, and thank him. So that's fantastic. Um, I've, I've got to do a bit of a report too on, uh, I've got a few things here uh, on uh, what's been happening over in Uganda. And so that's really good. So um, uh, the girls have been having an amazing time uh, over there, and uh, there's all sorts of things have been happening. Some may be getting reports and, and different things. Unfortunately, Patrick's had to leave them. You met Patrick. He spoke here a, a few months ago now. Uh, his house was burgled in Kampala, and he's had to leave them and go back, and he's lost some things. And so, you know, that's the nature of living in Africa, I think. But that was quite stressful. So he's, I think Kampala's another 300 miles away or 300 k's away, and uh, so they've had to go back. Um, I've had some prayer requests for them just to, um, to really uh, have great breakthrough in what they were, what they were doing, um, and uh, they're going out, so uh, uh, here we go, hi sweetie, that's me by the way, hi sweetie, uh, just back from a long prayer meeting, so if you've ever been in India or Africa, prayer meetings don't go for half an hour, a little dab will do you, they really pray, you know what I'm talking about, and uh, so uh, uh, about to go to bed, Michelle and Shirley uh, gave testimonies, Deborah preached and 50 people got saved. So that was pretty cool, eh? So that was good. Um, some, some then got delivered from a spirit of stupidity. I just want to, if you could put your hand up, if you can identify with that this morning. No, there's none here. That's awesome. Oh, one. <laughs> so I've never heard of that before. Um, some got spirit uh, of naughtiness, meanness, etc. Jane was amazing. Got put on the spot several times, rose to the occasion. And, uh, and so that's really, really, really fabulous. Uh, and then another one came in just uh, late last night, um, uh, just heading back to the hotel to freshen up. Uh, Helen and I visited, so it's Helen Kennedy and I visited homes uh, with locals, led a whole family to Jesus, very receptive. Um, uh, just pray for me, I'm feeling really stuffed. So I got up, I got there about one o'clock this morning, I was asleep and I heard my phone go. So I got up, made a cup of tea, had a great time praying for Dale and, and all of that kind of thing. And uh, so this is what I got this morning. Just finished now, back at the hotel, preached the prodigal son from a Jewish perspective, had the altar call, everybody responded. Um, thank you so much for your prayers. I'm really grateful. So that's really cool, eh? So you've got some great things happening uh, in regards to, um, to mission and, and all of that over there. They're having, a, they're having a ball. And they had a couple of days R&R, &R, which was great. And uh, what they did with that is they went to a safari park. And so uh, they were only half an hour into the morning safari when they met two lions, which were about 50 yards away. And so they got to see lions, which is really cool, huh? And then they mated. And that's really cool as well. And uh, so the girls were excited. The lions were obviously excited. And, uh, and so the, um, uh, that what happened was that the gamekeeper said to them, you've got to understand, she said, we've had people working in this park for years. They have never seen that. That is a very rare event. And these girls just go, oh, we're half an hour. Oh, look, there's lions. Oh, look, now they're making babies, lions, and, uh, and so all that kind of thing, and uh, you know, so Dale was saying they were just so blessed by all of those kind of things, so now they're back into it, and uh, so they'll be home pretty soon, I think they're home next week, is that right? Yeah, another, another eight or nine days yet, but something like that, so, uh, so that's really cool. There's a scripture um, that says this, that, um, whew, it says, uh, the scriptures looked forward to a time when God would declare the Gentiles to be righteous because of their faith. I want to talk about faith in a few moments, but God declares us righteous because of our faith. And uh, because we've got a, a father of faith. And uh, God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all the nations shall be blessed through you. And so all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing. They share the same blessing. 
So, so you go, oh, well, I'm not really a person of faith. But you have a father in Abraham, and more importantly, a promise in Jesus that, that, that you have faith in your life, and it is phenomenal. And if I'm reading this correctly, it says all nations shall be blessed through you. And, and I look at that, and I go, you know, when we, when we take up our tithes, our offerings, we look at, and today is Mission Sunday, and uh, I looked at my envelope this morning, and uh, so I've got a tithe written there, but you can put in the emissions. We don't have a classic missions offering anymore, uh, envelope, I should say. Just put in the emissions, all right? And, and so what we want to do, because we've got Play Cafe, we've just given a lot of money to Play Cafe. And, uh, and because we want to reach local missions. You know what I'm talking about? We want to be able to just sow and invest into that. We've got dream deliverers coming up again at Christmas. We want to invest in those families. It's missions, all right? We've got Uganda going on. We've got a long-standing commitment to, to India, which is phenomenal. We're supporting churches all over. And, you know, what, what we give to this is, is incredible. And if you've not come prepared for that, then uh, that's okay. But I ask you to prepare. You know, you can... You can, you, can, you can give online. Um, uh, I'm investigating a little thing on my phone. I can actually go onto my phone to a little app that I've got when I'm in Auckland, and I'm at a particular church. I just find them, and I go, oh, they're on this phone. All I have to do is go press, like, okay, I want to give 50 bucks, 50 bucks, press the button, boom, it goes into their account. How cool is that? So, uh, underwhelming response from some, overwhelming response from others. So, young people get it because they never have cash. You know, they just go like, give me an app. You know, that's really cool. I've got done. And so uh, I, I gave at that conference. I didn't have to fill in things. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to push it. And uh, so I'm investigating that at the moment because uh, I want to make it easy for you to give money to mission. There was faith here. There was kind of reluctance there. It's kind of like, it's, it's really interesting being able, it's like a conductor. It's fantastic. So Father, today we want to say thank you that we have a capacity in our lives to give. And, uh, and so, Lord, we think of those girls this morning. Come on, just, come on, just start lifting them up. And, uh, Lord, they've got a big day today. They're, got, they're sleeping at the moment, but Sunday's coming. And, uh, and uh, Father, we just pray that as they go and they preach, as they testify, uh, Lord, as they share their testimonies, Father, I want to pray for a move of the Holy Ghost. I want to pray, Father, for a move where people get born again, they get healed. Look, if they get delivered from a spirit of stupidity, then, Father, let it bring it on. Uh, just, Father, if people are, setting, are getting set free, we love that. He's came to, he came to set the captives free came to heal the brokenhearted. And so, Lord, today we take our gift, we take our tithes, we take our mission giving, and we say we sow this, Father, into the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And all God's people said, Amen. Awesome. Right. If someone like to pass those buckets around, uh, thanks, Rex. Would someone like to just toss that over there for me? There we go. Thanks, buddy. Put, put it in there. That'll be... Really, really, really cool indeed. Who's sitting beside someone really attractive? Oh, oh, it's very cool. Grant Bacon never put his hand up at all. He's, he's still, uh, he's a, we all know why. <laughs> it's fantastic stuff. Give the musos a hand, eh? And uh, as they. <coughs> I want to talk a little bit this morning about, uh, about faith, and um, uh, who enjoyed last Sunday, by the way? That was good. I, I, I really had that message on my heart. I've had so many people ask me for the notes, so they're still around, but um, I, I really felt in my heart that I wanted to do something and tackle some areas of spiritual warfare. And, uh, you know, and, and in this week as I was praying and building in the spirit and, and uh, you know, just as a church, we, uh, you know, we've done the building and it's fantastic, all of those kind of things. But, you know, there has to be the next step that we go to. We just can't be content with, okay, we've done that. Now what? And so, you know, we want to be able to look at who we are as a church and, uh, and whatever we're doing as a church and begin to say, well, uh, you know, is it going to, is it just having a building is not going to do it. What are we going to do with that? What are we, what's our vision? What's our values? You know, what are we going to do and work towards that? I've been challenged in the whole area of walking in the spirit as a body of believers, you know, to be able to touch our nation and nations and, uh, and to bring about a revival. 
because that's to bring, just just be a person in the right place at the right time. And this, and I'm I'm starting to have people now with dreams going, hey, listen, I've just seen this big wave in my dream, and I really felt to talk to you about it. Do you know what that means? And I'm going, yeah, I do know what that means actually, uh, because I've been carrying that for a long time. And you know, God just wants to touch uh, our community. He wants to t- have a have a wave of compassion. He wants to have a wave of grace. He wants to have a wave uh, of acceptance and of love. He wants to have a wave of renewal and revival. He wants to have a wave that will release people and so they're no longer bondaged anymore. And uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that I'm, I'm looking for in that. And as I was praying about that, I really felt that you know, we needed to put our finger on some things. And one of the key things in our Christian life is the whole area of faith. A lot of people would say that, well, I don't have faith. You know, um, and, and, and you know, I'm saying this to you, you can't be a Christian without faith because God gave you, even the Bible says, a, you know, like faith is the size of a mustard seed. It will grow into a great tree. And he used the illustration that what we have, you know, that being given, when we begin to use it, it begins to spread and think. Now, Kiriyama noticed this morning, he looked at me and he says, uh, Pastor, have you been working out? You look so good. And... Um, I'm going to, you can move into my house anytime you like. That's awesome, buddy. That's like fantastic. You know, like, so uh, I haven't, but I, you, you go, oh, I wish, you know, you go, you know, you, because the, the more you move a muscle, the bigger it gets. That's why some of you got big tongues. Because um, you've got to work, you got to work that thing. You know, you've got to, you got to work it. But so, so faith is like a muscle. Faith is something as we, begin to, we, as we begin to step out, as we begin to do things, as we begin to, as we begin to take risks in God. John Wimber, you know, said this. He says, faith is spelt R-I-S-K. And so that's, you know, times where, where, where risk is involved when we step out in faith. There's a statement here that's, uh, that's fabulous. Let's look at this slide. It says, faith is one of the greatest spiritual principles of the universe because it is by the means by which the power of God is released into the human experience. Now, you know, I I, I thought about that a lot. That statement wasn't that statement at the beginning of the week. And and as I began to look at it again and God began to work on me and begin to, you know, I looked at that and I go, yeah, that's it. Because faith is one of the greatest spiritual principles of the universe. There is a principle that we get in our lives that that can generate, uh, as we walk, if you like, um, we we generate a power. There There is power in going. It's like the dynamo principle that we've talked about many times and the old-fashioned uh, bikes that we used to have. Nowadays, you put a battery in, but uh, when, when I was younger and in the day, you know, you were biking along, and if it was dark at night, you just put your foot down, didn't you, just carefully, and you clicked the dynamo on, and it would go against the front wheel, and if you're lucky, you didn't get your, caught, your foot caught, because if you did, you went straight over the handlebars, but uh, then the light would come on, and then the faster you bike, the brighter the light would be. Who can remember those days? Oh! Okay, it was like, who's, who's still got one of those bikes? No, there you go, that's what I thought. But anyway, that, that's, but, but the slower you went, the less was, was the light. And, um, and so there's this whole generation. The, on the greater scale of that, if you go to see a, a power generator, you see, um, you, know, you see this power being generated, water rushing through. There's a giant dynamo in there generating power. But the more that we go, see, a lot of people go, well, those girls you know, in Africa, they're doing a great job, and the, you know, they're touching up, and their souls are getting saved. People are getting healed from all kinds of crazy things. And you know, they're, they're going out and leading families to Jesus. They're just doing that. Well, that, they can do that. I could never do that. The only reason that they're doing that, because if they were still here, they would not be doing that. Is that logic? What they've done is they've said, and you saw them line up a few weeks ago, and I just about lost my hand because I didn't get the mic back. You know, and we had, we had Shane was going to come on and all those kind of things because they were excited. What they were doing is they were declaring out of their mouth what was going to happen. Michelle stepped over the line. Remember that? And, 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 you know, Helen, you know, she said, this is going to happen. And she, t- she talked about influence already in the city. And then she's taking with that now. And she steps out and the dynamo begins to operate and faith begins to generate because it's one of the greatest spiritual principles in the universe. Because it is the means by which the power of God is released into the human experience. It's so when Peter stepped out of the boat, it was the means by which he stood on the water. When Jesus broke the bread and, 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 and when, he, when he took the fish, it was the means by which the multiplication began to take place. What could happen if you and I begin to step into that kind of experience? 
and say, well, what would happen if we just went, wow, let's just talk to that person, you know, and, and you know, it's going to be a bit of a risk. Yeah, it's going to be a faith risk. Anywho, so let's look at this next slide. So faith is really um, part of hand. All of us have got, most of us have got one of these. And, um, and, and so faith, if you like, is, is, a, is a hand. And, and, and we'll work through this for a bit. But there's some points I want to do. There's one, two, three, four, five points. But the first point is faith is linked to grace. Look at the scripture. It is by grace you have been saved. Let's say by grace together. By grace grace. You have been saved, all right? It's by grace you've been saved through faith. Faith is incredible, but it's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Oh, I don't have any faith. God's given you faith. He's given you a gift. When you got born again, he gave you a gift of faith, supernaturally gave you a gift, dropped it into your heart. When I was 11 years old, sitting in a meeting, you know, my, my, I was suddenly, and I'd been in meetings for 11 years, Mum and dad took me regularly to church, and, uh, you know, they just didn't shy away from that. They go, oh, oh, you know, oh, I don't want to go to church. It wasn't an option in my house. You know, I didn't want to go. Why is your leg hanging off? Are you vomiting blood? Um, you can come to church. You know, go to sleep underneath the pew. But you were in church, so I was brought up in church. And, and so I heard the gospel, and I heard all those things, and it wasn't a bad thing. And until the day that when I was sitting in church and the power of God came and he came and says, now's the time. You've said little prayers. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child, pity my simplicity, help me Jesus, come to thee. It was a prayer that my parents taught me. And I prayed it by rote for years and years and thinking it was just some kind of weird thing that I prayed. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child, pity my simplicity, help me Savior, come to thee. And I did. Because he heard my prayer. And, and I remember going to sleep the other night. And the craziest thing, you know, the, you, know you, you just like, you know, you watch television too long because your wife's away and you, uh, you go to bed later. She does the same when I'm away, apparently. And, uh, and then finally I went to bed and, you know, the dog's sitting on the end of the bed. Don't tell Dale that. And, um, and uh, you know, she's settling down. I'm settling down. And I'm sitting there and I go to sleep. I've got my head on the pillow. And for some weird reason, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon this little child, came into my head from years and years ago. But the interesting thing was that when I came to that point when I was 11, God says, now it's time, and dropped a seed of faith in me and said, act on that. And I remember it took 24 hours to grow. But in that time, I took that feeling, if you like, of faith. And, and, and it was the grace that was here. So it wasn't of myself. It's the gift of God. It wasn't works, because I was not going to boast about this. It's not about me. It was about, always about him. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works. He said, I've got a whole bunch of stuff I want you to do, and this is going to be part of the growth of the seed of faith in your life, which God prepared beforehand, wow, because he knew destiny was on my life and your life as well, before your parents knew you. He goes, I have got you covered. But he dropped that in and go, what are you going to do with that? And I remember talking to my father, and, uh, and I remember him giving me the advice, you need to listen to your heavenly father, not your earthly father on this matter. And I knew exactly as an 11-year-old what he meant, that I had to follow my heart. And that night when they made the altar call, the seed of faith erupted, and I went forward, gave my heart to Jesus. There was no follow-up in those days. You know, there was nothing like that. There was no one came and, you know, kind of looked after you and counseled you. It was just basically Jesus said, follow me, so you followed him. And, and, it, and it worked. And it stuck. It's quite good. Why? Because it, faith was a dynamic principle at work in my life. Faith is always linked to grace. Let's look at the next one. Faith is joined to truth. Faith's always joined to truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So faith is, a, is powerful in that way. Look, look at the scripture. I love this. So faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Uh, sorry, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's kind of like, you know, here we go. This is the faith aspect of our life. This is the incredible aspect of, of, of when we step into the truth of God that, that it, becomes, it becomes substance for us. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. There is a, you've got to have hope. 
If you don't have hope, we're done for. We've got a hope for tomorrow. That's why we go, yeah, great building, fantastic, all of those kind of things. But now we're going, what now? What now? What are the purposes? What are the principles? What are those things? What are those wells that we really need to dig again? Because we can't just sit in the community and have no one know about us. You know, we, and it's not just a club for people to come together and go, thank you, Jesus. We, we've got to be... We've got to be able to be, we've got to be able to have a hope for another day. We've got to have substance to our faith. So hope and faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And evidence is a legal term. And so we work, we work, and this is where truth is linked to it all the time. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That when we, when we hear the word of God, Romans talks about this. He says, you know, through the hearing of the word, there is faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There is truth linked to that. Ephesians talks about truth being a, a belt around us, you know, the, the, the belt of truth, and everything hung off that truth. The breastplate was linked to that. If you looked in the whole area of armor and all of that, it was all linked together, and belt was, the belt of truth was the thing that held that together. And as we read the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, when we read this book, the book, when we read the book, when we read about some of the great patriarchs, they've, they've done a movie of the book. It's so cool. Uh, Shane and I were watching it at home the other night. In fact, I came down and I snuck a bit on the, on the uh, on, put it on the screen. I watched, I watched Jesus healing some people. The way that they've done it, the History Channel's done it actually. It's phenomenal. Made by the same people it, it made Touch by an Angel. And somehow they've got their historical stuff together and they put that together. And it's a really, really good. In fact, the day before that Shane preached Eagle on the Stick, remember that? Yeah, we watched... Pilate come in to Jerusalem and Jesus come into Jerusalem. Jesus on the donkey, Pilate on the horse, and Shane went, I'm preaching that tomorrow. And it's just so fed. But when you look at the book, I sit here, I sat like Jenny, basically where you are the other day. Auditorium was dark. Um, I put the screen up. No one else was here. And I turned the sound up as loud as the neighbors would let me. And uh, I watched this thing and just tears running down my face because it's the word of God that brings truth. It's substance. It's a, it's a, it's, it, it began to act on that little seed that's still in my life of faith and begin to say, come on, I want you to grow some more. I want you to spread some more. I want you to break some more boundaries. I want you to go and touch some more nations. I want you to go and do all of those things. Isn't that cool? Let's look at this next one. See, what happens, the whole area of... of, of uh, <laughs> See, the fact is the word. The fact is, is truth. That's, that's the truth. But many, many of us want to want to have want to have our feelings. I don't I don't really feel full of faith. I don't you know I want to move in the spirit, but I don't really feel that that God you know is with me. Well, if you begin to look at the fact of the word of God, that God is with you because He says it in the book, and, and then you begin to put faith into the fact that he says that, that it becomes the engine room, if you like, because you'll never see a train being pulled around by a carriage at the end. It's always being pulled around by an engine at the front. And so when you take the, the fact of God's worth and you put your faith in it, I will act on that. You see what Peter did when he stepped out of the boat, said this is the water. Jesus said, why don't you come? And he stepped out onto the water and he, he goes, I don't know. He says, but at your word, I will come. And so he put that. And, and was he feeling good about that? No, he wasn't. <laughs> Because when he was actually out there going, I'm, I'm, I've, got the, I've got the facts, <laughs> I've got the faith, and now I just don't feel so good. <laughs> and he sunk. And Jesus says, come on, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Let's look at the next slide. Another aspect is faith is a gift. Let's look at the scripture. There are diversities of gifts. We heard this come out this morning. Chuck, I thought you were going to steal all my thunder this morning. You bought, start bringing this out. It's like God wants to give you gifts. I'm going, that's absolutely true. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Who knows this difference of ministries? The foot, Corinthians says, can't say to the hand, I've got no need of you. And so you've got this whole deal going on where, where, where sometimes we look at other people's ministries and, and, you know, for whatever reason, whatever our humanity is, we get ticked off with them. Well, they don't do it like I would do it. Of course they don't do it like you would do it because they're doing it like they're doing it. 
They've got different ministries. It's diverse. So there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. So, the, so we've all got Jesus in our life. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit operating in our life. And then there are diversities of activities, but it is the same Lord who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So if one person, say, say, say um, this last Sunday night, Ray was phenomenal, and he's like preaching up here, and, and there's that manifestation what he was, uh, he was bringing to young people and older people alike. And, and, and so here it was, he, was, he, was, he had the manifestation of the Spirit was given for one and, and the profit for all. He got the revelation, but all of us pro were profiting from it. When Shane comes and he unleashes what Shane unleashes, all of us profit from what he has been given to the body of Christ. So he brings that teaching gift, and then all of us start hitting the concordances or going online and discovering and digging because the gift of the teacher gets on us. The gift of the historian gets on us. When a revival... We've got Dennis coming next week. Dennis bought, Dennis McCaskill, many of you don't know, and I understand that, but Dennis has written an amazing book called Grace Under Fire. He's a great evangelist. He's a young guy with a young family who just decided to do something for New Zealand and bought Reinhard Bonnke to New Zealand. Wow. Organized that thing, managed to get him here, had a huge meeting in Auckland. And, you know, I've been talking to him on and off for the last two or three years. He's coming down to speak to the, to the, to the ministers, to the, to the, to he's just going, you know, around. And I, I invite him, I said, look, what, if you can get yourself down, I'm batching at the moment, but I'll look after you, and what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and so he goes, I'm coming. So uh, we're going to have him for a few days. And I thought, while you're here, you might as well preach. And so, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So, so he will bring something of revival because he's an author. Uh, he's, a, he's a revivalist. He's an evangelist. He, he's hung out with some amazing people. So my expectation is that when he begins to speak in the diversities of ministries, that's going to get on our lives. Anyway, and, and so there we go. So one is given to the word of wisdom through the Spirit. So these are some of the things that, that the Spirit gives. So he gives, so let's up here. The Spirit is given to each prophet for all. Verse 8, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Next slide. To another faith. Let's say that together. Faith is given by the same Spirit. Now that is not saving faith. That is not the, you know, it's by, it's by grace you have been saved through faith. That's not your faith for salvation. This is faith for the miraculous. <clears throat> I, I was confronted with a, um, a mentally unstable large man uh, many, many years ago uh, in our church who had a religious demon. Uh, we knew about him all around town. He was an ex-wrestler, but he had escaped from a psychiatric institution near Auckland, which is now closed. And he had made his way down to Otaki, where we were. And uh, we'd heard about him around town. And thank you, Jesus, he turned up to our communion service. Uh, and uh, we got this little church. We had about 50 people and uh, mostly farming people. And I'm the, 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 the pastor at the front who didn't know Diddley. And I'm just there. I've only been there for five minutes. And this character comes in and he is enormous and uh, I, I remember uh, you know um, everybody's like oh you know he's yelling out and he's making and, and it's all it's all religious stuff you know it's all kind of you know um, uh, you know if you just saw it written down you would say well he's just praising God but there was an edge to it there was a there was a commotion to it if you like it's like Paul confronting the servant girl he said, these, are men, these, servants are, um, these are men are servants of the Most High God. And in the end, Paul being ticked off, delivered her from the demonic thing that really was a, uh, a spirit of, um, uh, well, python is the word, but a, a spirit of soothsaying or fortune-telling. But the Greek word is python. Isn't that interesting that when the enemy begins to wrap itself around you and you get crushed in his thing, that the life goes out of you and that he begins to take over. But that is another story entirely and uh and so this guy comes in and in the end we start having communion and i start breaking bread well he comes down the aisle and uh he starts really manifesting all of this kind of stuff everybody because he was heading for me and uh everybody in the church you know just helped me by putting their heads down and looking at the carpet and going so they were just great people they really were and um and so i remember he got there and i said to him sit down and uh, when he got to the front, so he sat down. 
And then halfway through, he stood up again and then sat down and stood up again. So at that stage, something happened to me. When he stood up for this time, I think what happened was to another faith by the same spirit hit me first. And then there was, a, then there was an anointing for deliverance that came on my life because I remember looking at him going, in Jesus' name, sit down. And he went, sat down. And he went, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Shut up. And we had communion, and uh, I felt like Goliath, <laughs> and Billy Graham, and Benny Hinn without the hair, and it was just the whole deal. I remember this like, like check me out now. You know, I remember you know walking up and down. Authority came, and people looking at me going, "Who is he?" You know, like Dale was looking at me going, "Oh my goodness!" And uh, I remember going home. Uh, I remember that same thing we're having, and I was saying, "Dale, did you see that?" Did you see, I'm in the middle of lunch going, did you, did you see that? Did you see what I did? Did you see what I did? Like that, because the police had come for him and all that kind of handcuffs. Oh, it was awesome. You know? But I just was, I was just filled with faith. I was filled with all that. And then suddenly it lifted off me. I went, oh, he, he, he could have killed me. Dale's going, where is that man of faith and power now? You know, like, I got the man of paste and flour now. You know, it's just like, oh. Another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, another discerning of spirits, to another different kind of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But to one of the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to everybody as he wills. I think that's exciting. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So that's another aspect of the whole area of faith. Let's look at the next slide. Faith is power. There's power in faith. There is power in faith. When, you start, when I started operating in that way, there was power in that. Sit down! There was power in that. There was authority wrapped. Look at the scripture. And in his name, through faith in his name, has, this, has made this man strong whom you see. Now, this is the backstory of this, is when Peter and John were going to the, um, to the temple and the man was begging. Remember, he was at the temple gate and he goes, look, you know, uh, I see you guys there. Uh, um, you know, can you give me some arms? Can you give me something to help me? I'm a beggar, can't you see? And they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. It's an Acts 3. And, and, uh, Acts 3? X 2. X 3. And you know, it's an Acts. And, uh, and, and, and so this is what they say, because they were challenged about that. And they say, and in his name, who is his? Thank you. In Jesus' name, through faith in Jesus' name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Seen him every day at the temple. You know exactly what's going on with his life all of the time. Yes, the faith which comes through Jesus through him, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. There is power in faith. And I am looking to a day. I tell you, I look at those little clips, you know, of, of say, Jack Coe, the great healing evangelist. There's one, I was going to show it to you this morning, but it was too dodgy to show. It was just, like, and too long. But here's this guy with, I don't know, TB or cancer or something horrible, open sores. It's all in black and white. But he's lying there in the state. Bring him in on a stretcher, you know, and, 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 and he's preaching away. And then he pulls him up out of the stretcher, you know, like, and, and this guy can hardly stand it. He's got a, he's got a, um, a hospital gown on and uh, and and jack coe's going come on in jesus name there's power in that name and he's like i'm going holy moly you know and then this guy starts going i feel better and he starts like walking around and and you can see on the clip and, and you just like and he starts walking up and down and he and he starts testifying here he is one minute bleeding on a literally on a on a on a stretcher and next he's walking around and jack coe says give him something to eat someone go out and get him something to eat because this man needs to eat. He hasn't eaten for months. He needs to eat now. And they're going out getting this guy to eat. I go, oh, that's, that's quite exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. It's faith and there's power and faith. You want to see that? Watch Clark Taylor minister. Yeah. Pastor Clark, my goodness. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm frightened. I'm sitting in the front row. A lot of people move out of the front row when he starts, when power comes on his life. They move out. I've seen them. They, they just go, I'm getting out of the front row because he's liable to attack anybody. If you've got no faith in your life, he'll just like, he'll just, oh, he, he, put, he does his hands like this. And you know then you've got to leave or be in the fray. And he'll look at Grant Baker, you'll look at him, and you'll start moving around like this, and you go, move away from Grant Baker right now because he's going to come down there and open a can right on him of the Holy Ghost. It's awesome. And he'll be on the deck and he'll be, 
he'll be okay. And, uh, and so faith comes through him. It's power in that. He's given him perfect soundness in the presence of all. I love it. Let's look at this next. Look. And faith is our victory. This is the last one. Faith is our victory. Faith is our victory. It's faith, 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 faith. Look through Hebrews 11. You know, like the great heroes of faith. I, I, I look through in missions program. Um, today's Mission Sunday, but you know, you look at the, the great stories of Glennis Alwood and, you know, and, and others who through the years who have lost Jonathan Goforth. Imagine having a name like Jonathan Goforth. Uh, what's your name? Goforth. Really? And he ends up in the, in the middle of China in the Boxer Rebellion, where they said where they were killing the Christians so much that, you could have to, that, that the blood ran in the square of, uh, I, I think it was now known as Tiananmen Square, the blood ran ankle deep by the Christians being martyred in the Boxer Rebellion. It was horrifying. And Jonathan Goforth went in the middle of that and he preached the gospel. There's people like Andrew White today in the middle of Baghdad preaching the gospel. I've been praying for him all week because nicely, you know, that, that man is there serving Muslims and he's serving Christians uh, and, and, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a disaster going on in Iraq at the moment. There really is a disaster going on. And the Christians are being persecuted. And I was reading other stories of that last night and I was going, I, I needed to focus on this. And I was going, God, you know, and then he goes, faith's our victory though, Ian. Read Hebrews 11. They wandered round and they, they were persecuted for their faith. And they, we haven't seen any of that in New Zealand at all. Just because someone's mean to you at church does not fit into persecution. Sorry about that. They're just mean. They just need to get saved. It's okay. Look at the scripture. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments... For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. That's, that's really basic Christianity. It's just loving God and loving his word. And, and for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. They're not that hard. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. 11 years old, seed of faith, born again. Now I can overcome the world. Oh, what do you mean? You're going to overcome world poverty and all that? No, no, no. I'm going to overcome my world. My world. I don't have to live in my world anymore. I don't have to be subject to the world with all of its pressures and strains. Because I, I'm an alien now. The Bible describes me as an alien. Nanu, nanu. You know, all that stuff. I'm, I'm an alien. I'm from a different place. I represent a different king. I'm an alien now living in a world that I used to live in. I don't fit in this place anymore. But the problem is most Christians try to fit in and wonder why they're ineffective and their faith is not a victory for them. And we, we keep, so for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith. That's our victory. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? That's why we make altar calls. That's why we, 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 we get, because there's angels in here right now going, I want to put a seed of faith in someone. Maybe you're away from God. Maybe, you're, maybe you've just come out of religious duty and, and all of those kind of things. But God says, I want to put a seed of faith in you again. I want to take the seed that was there and I want to begin to water it again because I want you to grow and expand. Because, because he who believes, uh, he who come, overcomes the world is he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And when we begin to testify that, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he is the Son of God. You know, I, I didn't used to be able to say praise the Lord. I was a pastor and it stuck in my throat. I said, I've never made that confession in public before. I'm making it today. I remember I struggled with it. I had friends who used to go, oh, praise the Lord. And it used to irritate me. And I remember I was up at a friend's place. He was another pastor, and I had asthma really badly. And, uh, uh, and he said to me, um, he said, God will deliver you from that asthma if you let him. And I got really angry, which is a real indication that there was something wonky going on in my life. It wasn't a spirit of stupidity, but it was a spirit of something. Actually, probably it was a spirit of stupidity. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I went to my bedroom, and I sulked for about hmm, probably half the afternoon. And God spoke to me and says, what are you doing? Get up. <laughs> it's like Joshua, you know, get up. 
And so I got out there and I went out and said, yeah, I think I do need prayer. And, he, and Dale and was out there and he was out there. and yeah, did. So I remember sitting down uh, in his lounge. Oh, I sat down. There was a coffee table in front of me. And uh, he started to pray for me. And, uh, and uh, as he prayed for me, it was one of those ones with a glass top and it's all carved. You know, they're quite heavy. I remember grabbing the edge of it like that and picking it up and raising it up in the ground, you know, like that, really angry. And Dale was looking at me, and he was looking at me going, holy moly, because you couldn't do that. It took two people to lift it. And I suddenly put it down again. I remember putting it down, and freedom come into my life. It was very interesting that not only did I not have asthma anymore, and my doctor said to me, there is no evidence of you ever having had asthma in your life. That was pretty cool. And he's been my doctor for 40 years. That's quite good, eh? Yeah. So he's, it's not, he's, you know, it's not fly-by-night stuff. When we were going home from that place, he lived, it was in Halmoana in the North Island. We were driving back to Otaki. I saw a picnic area. And so I pulled the car into the picnic area, and, I, and Dale said, what are you doing? I said, well, I think we need to get the let the kids out and give them a run around. The poor things have been stuck in the car. And she went, who are you and where is my husband? I went, what, what are you talking about? She said, you've never done that. Well, I, want, I think I wanted to. She said, yeah, but you've never done it. And there was something there that gave me freedom. It was an amazing time. I can get down. It's just trouble getting back up again. It's just like, I always try to get down for, I don't want to put my leg out or anything. Like that. Oh, here we go. It's our faith. It's part of how we, get, how we overcome. And if it's not going to work in our life. And so I remember I got home from all of that and I remember walking through the house and I went, praise the Lord. That was such a good thing. And Dale looked at me because she knew my struggle with it. And then I just, all the time, I just started to pray, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. There was something of a religious spirit that had restricted me or something that had locked me down for years so I couldn't be expressive. And that was the day. I was a pastor. That was the day I got free. And my challenge to you today is God can free you. If he can free me, he can free you. Because those restrictions just are in our lives. Let's look at this. I'm going to finish soon. See, faith is like that. And so if we go through each finger from the little finger... We just go, the first part is just grace. We have to understand that faith or grace is part of the whole area of faith. And then we've got the whole area of truth. Truth is powerful. Here's the way, the truth, and the life. Then we've got, excuse me, the gift of God. It's a gift. Faith is a gift. He wants to give that gift to you. And then we've got power. I tell you, we've got to have power in our lives. And then we've got this. We've got victory. Grace, truth, gift, power, and victory. And if we understand We've got a grip on that. There's something begins to be powerful in our lives. So powerful. I've, I've had this in my heart for this. The last couple of weeks, I felt the Lord saying, the church needs to know, hear about faith again, hear about faith. You'll probably hear me talking about faith on and off in the, next, in the next few weeks, but faith is so powerful. Check this out. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Absolutely impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please. Oh, I so want to please God. Without faith, it's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to because, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I think, I don't know where that's, or earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11, 6, powerful scripture. You, you need to take a note on this and just, um, and I, if you want these notes, I'll email them to you, uh, all of those kind of things. But without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And when we come to him, he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. One of the great apostles of faith, I'm going to get the musos to come, but one of the great uh, apostles of faith is Smith Wigglesworth. And uh, he's a remarkable old guy. He's illiterate. You know that? He was illiterate. He was amazing. He just, uh, it was a guy that just you know, couldn't read, couldn't write. I've mentioned him a few times. And the only thing that he read in his entire life was the Word of God. He challenged people at the time. He challenged them. He said, to, to, he said I will give 50 pounds. 50 pounds was an enormous amount of money in those days. He said, I, challenge, I will give 50 pounds to any man or woman who can catch me without the Word of God. And people throughout his life would say, show me your Bible. 
and he would pull his Bible out from his pocket. He always carried it, always read it. And he made an interesting statement, and I'm finishing with this. He said, if you move forward only a foot, you'll get blessed. He said, if you move forward a yard, you'll get more. And if you come up to this platform, he would say, because he was a healing evangelist. He said, if you come up to the platform, we'll pray for you, and God will meet your needs with his supply. Why did he say those things? He did it because he was a man of faith. He had a grip on faith. He lived in the word of God. He lived in the truth of it. He lived in the power of it. He lived in the victory of it. He lived in the grace of it. He lived in the gift of it. He knew exactly what it was to be able to have grace in your life. I want you to stand this morning as we finish. And just uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's people here today that you know, faith's been laying dormant in your life, and today the Holy Spirit's going to blow on that. The Holy Spirit's just going to start blowing. Maybe that seed's been there in your life for a long time. Maybe you used it to get saved, and then you just carried on your life. If I can say that's not life. Jesus said, I've come to give you life in all of its fullness. And so this morning, what I want you to do is I want you to allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to just begin to start blowing on you. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. You see that seed in your life? That's awesome. Thanks, Jenny. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Jesus. Jesus. Some of you can see that seed right now. Some of you have put it in a room and you've, you've kind of locked it off. It's been in a little kind of a garden shed. <laughs> yeah, that's your Sunday shed or your Christian shed. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you. This is a seed like Jack and the Beanstalk. This is a seed that will rip through floorboards and take the roof off a house. And it'll begin to grow that so large that People will find shelter in it. Birds will roost in it. And I want you to start to be lift your, lift your voice down and start thanking God for the gift of faith in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that faith in my life. Thank you for saving faith. Come on, just begin to thank God for saving faith this morning. The saving faith of God. Thank you for the grace gift of faith. Unmerited saving faith. Thank you for that great gift of faith. Walk on water faith. <laughs> or walk across the street faith. Just as powerful. Walk across the street with the gift of faith and change someone's life. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you. Maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ. I can't think of a better moment to be able to say yes to him and if that's you this morning say God I want to I need you in my life I need you to come and change everything it's just turning to custard I need you to to change me I need your grace I need your power and I want you, want you to do is lift your hand very high and take it and just take it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right across this auditorium. Fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just take it. Take hold of it. Take hold of it. Wonderful, Jesus. What can you do with that faith? What can you do with it? What can you do with it? And it's not about being a human doing. It's about being a human being. Because when the faith of God is in you. You will become and you are a son and daughter of the Most High God. You are a joint heir with Him. And today, Father, I pray in Jesus' name over every person in this room. If you're watching on the internet, if you're watching live streaming right now, I want to pray for you for a moment. I just want you to look at that screen right now and I just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, these folks from really all around the world, and I want to pray. I, I, I've never met you and I possibly will never meet you. 
But I want to pray that grace and favour and goodness and life will come into your life. And we're all going to pray this prayer for you this morning. I want you to, to, to we're going to say this prayer after me. We're all going to say it here in the Invercargill Christian Centre, the ends of the earth, the bottom of New Zealand. We're going, to, we're going to pray this for you. And I want you to repeat it after me. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you today that you gave me a seed of faith. And I want to thank you that I can grow it today with your help. Lord, would you forgive me? Will you come into my life, change me, heal me, and restore me? I want to walk with you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can I do one more thing? There are some people here this morning that really resonated with my story. And you've been in church a long time, as I had been. And there is a, a great victory here this morning, if you want to step into it. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just simply do what you've been doing. Just, I don't want people looking around, but if you want release from that this morning, lift your hands. Lord Jesus. I want to thank you that you came to set captives free. Whew. You're still watching on live streaming. This is for you as well. There's a religious spirit I'm addressing right now. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over it. You filthy thing. You nasty religious spirit that's full of rigmarole and ritual and not life, I break your power now in Jesus' name. Break its power. <laughs> yeah. Woo. And Holy Spirit, we just say thank you right now. Infill this place. Infill these people. Just begin to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good one. The enemy hates that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Here's one he really hates. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. 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 Blood of Jesus. And all God's people said... God bless you guys. Have a great day. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. Because you are good and I'll dance Because you are good and I'll shout Because you are good, you are good to me And I'll sing Because you are good and I'll dance Because you are good and I'll shout Because you are good, you are good to me Nothing, nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans deep only reflect their truth. And in my darkest night, you shine as bright as day. Your love amazes me. And I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll dance because you are good, you are good to me. And I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good, you are good to me. With a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim.
you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me yes Lord Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you are good. We've got coffee and tea downstairs. Uh, we've got a missions table downstairs. So I encourage you to get down there and have a look at all the goodies they've got for sale and partner with missions. If you want prayer for anything, come down the front. We've got a prayer team that are eager to pray with you and agree with you in prayer. Uh, otherwise, remember, we've got our baptism service, 6 o'clock here tonight. Look forward to it. Thanks. <laughs>